not the statutory instrument. But all codes do have, to a greater extent, some legal, legal underpinning and therefore legal, legal requirements. So now we've got to sort of get a little bit deeper into how this works. And uh, we, we've got to look at the board. As I've said to you, it's the board which actually has responsibility for the governments. There are, in a sense, three, although well, this looks to be the same as that, there are actually three models of boards in the world. I'm talking here about companies that are listed on a stock exchange. Now, most banks today are listed on a stock exchange. Okay. In the UK, we have what is called the unitary board. That is, all the directors, I'll break it down in a minute, sit on, in one place around one table. In the, in the European Union, however, we have both unitary boards and what are called two-tier boards. And that's where you get a separation, a real separation between, this is now called a supervisory board, and this is called the board of management. So put another way, the unitary board, the supervisory board, the board of management is the board. In the European Union, it is a supervisory board and a board of management. And furthermore, in the European Union, on that board, of, on that supervisory board, you have representatives of the unions and the employees. You don't have that in the United Kingdom. It's called a stakeholder. It's more a stakeholder board than a Now, so what's the difference between these two? I don't know if they're very people or something. But no, I haven't, because what I'm trying to, to convey without getting ahead of myself is that the unitary board contains management. And we should, we should look at the moment to see how, how it's all mixed up into one. But in the United States, uh -oh. at the very most, there may be two from management on a board which could be 12, 15, 20. In other words, the majority on the US board, and when I say majority, we're talking 80% plus. That has nothing to do with management whatever. So therefore, you might say, well, isn't that the same as the two-tier board? But it isn't, so it's one board. So in this board, you've got more a mixture of those that manage and those that are directing. But they're all direct. I can see the confusion in my horizon, and it's all right, it'll, it'll come to me in a minute. Uh, on the US board, you've got a bunch of directors, and just say a couple of mad. You can already begin to start to think, well, how on earth can this board operate? with not having more presence of management who actually are there day to day. They know what's going on. It is said that it's ineffective. You might say, here, how can this board but manage? When it has nobody on the supervisory board, nobody who's managing that business. It's dependent. It has a supervisory board, a supervisory board in the EU model has certain powers that they're very limited. Very limited. One of which, of course, is to hire and fire the, the, uh, the chief executive, who's on the management board. I'm giving the English version, not the, uh, the German or the French. My German or French aren't that good. So, uh, <laughs> um, what it means, of course, is that that separation can 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 result in the management really having too much room, too much too much say, too much power. Right, so that's what we're going to concentrate on, but I wanted to convey to you these boards. What we're going to talk about is this one, this unitary board, because this is the one I think you should, you can learn a lot from that, and you can debate amongst yourselves whether you think two tables make sense or not. Now, the, the th we're now going to get um, more into the legal side of things. Um, I said you, I told you we would. Um, and I want you for the moment just to regard this board as all direct.
directions, all directions. 